Thank you for tuning into Stampscaping 101. It's been a very hot week in Southern California, and I set out to do a scene this afternoon that would be as cold as any scene that I've ever done. I was thinking about going with a nighttime scene in the snow with a hefty wind chill factor, okay? And I think we've achieved something Oh, pretty close to kind of that initial concept. Um, how to depict wind, I kept with the kind of wispier type of uh, motion to the uh, ink application. And I also kind of wanted to reiterate that with the angle of these branches, the spooky branch um, in here. So I kept everything going this way, you know. I did about three impressions of it using various portions of it. And uh, um, that angle kind of reiterates this kind of motion of uh, the wind. And then I did some splatter paint applications in here with my new friend, the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And I tried to splatter that on, and some of it kind of went on at a bit of an angle, you know. So, you, you know, if you saw any of this up close, some of it is a little bit kind of stretched out because I'm kind of, you know, I have my, where's my toothbrush, um, kind of have that at an angle and, you know, pulling it back and it's kind of splattering it in, in that general direction. So um, everything is to kind of reiterate that um, idea of kind of um, motion, okay? And it kind of go all going in the same direction. Even that um, this elk here um, kind of uh, pointed in that direction, and I kind of put it a little bit off center to kind of keep the movement going this way. But as I say in the end of this video, I think everything's kind of pointed in that direction. But I do feel like this is going this way, so it's kind of going like this and then up. You know, it's kind of a visual. Um, direction that this scene takes you on. But um, anyways, this scene, I, I really like how this scene came out, and there's a lot of things in here from a compositional standpoint that were a little bit different for me. You know, a lot of times I, I kind of have a balance to things, you know, going, you know, I tilt things, I typically have things in the foreground, but one's kind of tilted like this, and one's kind of tilted like that, kind of taking you into the scene, but this one's kind of go, all going like that, and then out. And I feel that that gives it kind of a little bit of a kind of a dynamic look to it, which I like. And um, I don't know, it's just a little bit of a different compositional kind of structure. And uh, I don't know, that's always good to kind of break out of uh, your comfort zone and uh, I don't know, or your tendencies, I guess, would be more like it. But um, I don't know, it's nice and cool for a probably 95 degree at, what time is it right now? 11 p.m. Uh, at night. So a little bit of a visual, a cool visual journey for me. And that's what's one of the fun things about um, scenic stamping. That's what I've kind of speculated um, over the years is that, you know, um, everyone kind of gets lost in doing their arts and crafts and things like that, whatever project you're on, it's, you know, we kind of, you know, we lose track of time um, when we're doing them. But in scenic stamping, I think they're like a little scene and because we're creating them and we're creating kind of the areas that we like to go to or like to be at or like to see, I think we kind of escape in them from a kind of a, I don't know, a scenic or landscaped standpoint, you know, we kind of enter the scene for that time that we're uh, working on them. So anyways, if you choose to watch the video, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks as always for tuning into the uh, channel. Okay, where I am in Southern California, it has been in the upper 90s to uh, I don't know, maybe even a hundred this week. And uh, very, very humid. So what I am going to do, 
which is something that you could do, is um, if you're watching this channel, you're probably a crafter, stamper, or even a scenic stamping enthusiast. And well, we can't change the weather, of course. We can escape into our own scenes in the time that we do this, perhaps, I don't know, from a I don't know, psychological standpoint, I guess. Um, okay, this is the snowy bank. And this is what I'm going to do in this scene. I want to stamp out, I'm going to attempt to stamp out the um, coldest, visually coldest scene that I can possibly do right now. Okay, now this is a the snowy bank stamp, and I just put this extra stamp up here because this is the um, tack and peel material, and it covers most of this block, but I'm putting this up there so that when I stamp it out, I don't rock it at all, and then this tacky part, you know, won't stick to my paper, okay? So, let's see what I can do here, all right? Let's keep in mind the uh, cold. So I'm thinking... What's cold? All right, snow, right? Kind of represents something nice and cold. What gets colder? Well, if you add a wind chill to it, right? All right, and maybe, you know, nighttime, so you take away any kind of light. So I'm thinking dark, cold, snowy, and with a wind chill, okay? I don't know. It's not that I want to be there. Well, I don't know. I guess you can kind of, kind of just escape into it a little bit. From a visual standpoint, like you're looking out the window, perhaps. All right, now I'm just kind of carrying this idea out to the edge of the page, which means, you know, I can use the left side here on the right side where it ended there. And this one's I'm using the right side where the left side ends here. And we're gonna overlap it slightly, okay? And that's why you don't need Things like, uh, you know, careful placement of imagery for the most part with scenic stamping. I think it just kind of gets in the way of uh, the seamless aspect of it. I guess here in the, uh, the clear, you can kind of see it. I probably am stamping about, let's see, about this much, you know, into the previous scene. This one goes to about right here, okay? So that one's, I don't know, it's a good, what? half inch, three quarter inch or so. All right, so it kind of just continues it out to the edge of the page. All right, now let's see what we can do here. This is going to be a little bit redundant um, from a scene that I just did, uh, or a lesson, you know, where I left the, the bottom part of the, uh, the page kind of, well, not kind of, I left it blank. But on this, I don't know, that one was just going for kind of a wintry look. Uh, very tranquil, I guess. And uh, um, this one, well, let me see, I have it right here still. All right, very calm and, I don't know, perhaps even serene. All right, cold, but I want this one to be colder, so. Anyways, that was stamped out in a Prussian blue. It was the darkest blue that I have, as far as I know. Prussian blue is a really great blue. I really like that. I like kind of extremities a lot of times. Okay, let's use some Memento Summer Sky as a base coat. Do I want to use anything else in here? Do I want some clouds, maybe? Just for some texture? Kind of contemplating. These clouds would represent something more of a still cloud, okay. Um, very peaceful look. I, I guess I could do it dark like that and it looks a little bit more ominous, but I'm wondering if I might just want a little bit of texture. I think it's going to get filled in there quite, you know, completely. So I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to see it. But let's just put some in there just... Anyway, I'm saying that because I'm going to put these wisps of uh, um, 
color in here, kind of giving it this windy type of look. All right. Actually, I need to take a look at this. Which way do I want the wind coming from? Maybe this way. Okay. So things are going to be at a little bit of an angle. Okay. Or wait. Here, I was going to do this. Okay, so forget that. This is kind of bending this way. It has a natural angle that way. And I want that to be going with the wind, okay? With that. So if the wind is always blowing it that way, it looks like the kind of nature has kind of shaped that tree branch that way. So we'll do it like that. Okay. So this is the cloud cumulus. This is a light blue, salvia blue. We could use the memento or something like that. I'm going to use the thinner Marvy ink, though, for this purpose because um, it's a little bit thick, thinner, and I think it absorbs into the page a little bit faster because it's a thinner style of ink. I'm wiping the edges right here just to kind of get rid of this um, rectangular shape. I don't normally have to do that because this might be kind of just suspended out here without any surrounding clouds. I might want to kind of eradicate that. So that gives it a little bit of a softer perimeter, okay? It transitions off into nothingness a little bit better if you mop off some of the ink so that the ink, the perimeter, stamps out lighter and thus, you know closer to the uh, the point of the paper. Okay, see that? So, stamped in black, ominous, stamped in light blue, and it's really quite, I don't know, fluffy, I guess, or whatever, you know, soft. Uh, that's what some comments people used to tell me sometimes. Well, I don't know if I want that clad. It's a little bit stormy. And I'd say, well, if you kind of stamp it in a light blue, it's not going to have that much contrast and it'll look much lighter and less stormy. And they would say, okay. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> uh, you know, they didn't get that concept there. It's, you know, people are visual, you know, in our, our media, so it was understandable. But, um, but I remember that uh, type of comment about this cloud, you know, many times. Okay. Can't remember if I wiped it off. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see a lot of this cloud when we're done here, so we'll see how it goes. Okay. So it's kind of. You know, I have this kind of motion going now in terms of the uh, shape. I might do it from the top, too, just uh, for a little bit of visual interest and, uh, I don't know, motion. Okay, now I've just taken off some of that top portion, and I stamped it like this way. Now I'm going to stamp it this way, okay? And that's kind of creating this little path of light down here. Because now, if the light is down here, this is bottom lit. Now, I do realize that I said this is going to be night. It's kind of a night-ish, you know? I do still want some, you know, light, lighter areas up here. But for the most part, I see this being more of a dark scene. I know I didn't wipe that off. I, I thought I might not need to. Okay. All right. So I think that is good enough. Okay, I need to start using my uh, cleaning pad right next to me here on my desk as uh, and I clean this off. Otherwise, what I do is I do these videos and I just go right over to start kind of processing them. And a couple days ago, I just took the time to clean off maybe, I don't know, 80 stamps that I had that had built up, maybe that's a good way to do it because then I'll kind of use different stamps you know, a lot of times if certain ones need to be cleaned and it takes me a while to getting around to it, but I don't know, that was that was kind of daunting. It's probably why I didn't do it for a while. I just kind of have this little brush cleaner and then I just kind of scrub them, them on a little bit and dry them off and I just kind of let them dry for a bit. 
least that's my cleaning method. I just use water. Okay, now on this one, I would normally say, okay, now, if you want to keep some of your clouds light, you know, like they're reflecting some of the light, don't tone them out. But this is going to be a fairly dark scene, I think. Okay, now, see, I'm going with this type of stroke because I want there to be, did I mention this is Memento Summer Sky? I want there to be kind of a gesture to it, like there's a, it's a wind kind of, you know, coming in. It's, you're not really gonna, going to be able to get that though from this first color because it is very light in hue, okay? Or in value, I should say. some of that snow reflecting whatever light there is, so I'm not going to use too much color on it. Well, I don't know, this is a really light color, so maybe I do use quite a bit of it, but we'll see. Okay, now normally snow would be very reflective, you know, and light, but maybe this is not so much of a dark night sky, or maybe there's not too much moonlight. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Okay. All right, that's Memento. Let me see if I have a little Adirondack Lights Aqua. someone mentioned today that they got an aqua pad, all right, and it seemed dry to them, and it very well could be, but one of the comments that I got all the time from people using this pad, um, and I'd see it in workshops, so I, I know what they're talking about, um, and it's completely understandable too, this ink, let well, me put a lot of ink down, see it right there, okay? Now, if I spread it around, right, can you see a difference at all right there? It looks almost like the point of the paper, right? It has a little bit of a streak like that. But because it is so, so there's this thing, okay? You now, as I spread it on, it's barely visible, isn't it? Okay? It's almost like just running water over it. Now, we're with every other pad out there on the market. And there aren't too many shadow stamping inks, okay? The idea behind shadow stamping inks was that they are so, so pale that when you stamp out whatever stamp, an image or a word stamp, and then you stamp kind of a little bit off center that same image again, it'll look like, you know, the first stamp is kind of raised or something like that, and the other one is a shadow of it, okay? These pads aren't, you know, are, I don't, especially a brand new one, if it has been open, it, I've rarely come across anything that's dry. I even have this thing sitting around for years open, and it's not, you know, dried out. Now, if you're somewhere in like a very arid area, like the desert, you know, Arizona or something like that, or very hot areas. It's it's very well, you know, it could be so that um, you've run across a, a, you know, a dry pad, but chances are it's most probably more likely that it is um, just so light in value. Which is one of the nice things about using this. It's such a... 
it is not a big commitment to a certain hue, whatever color you're working with. Okay, let's say if I'm doing a sepia looking one and it's very, um, I don't know, very warm brown tones and whatnot, you know. Um, you know, it's going to be a super light version. I forget what point I was making. I have a heat stroke right now. So try to bear with me if you're watching this one. I'm probably a little bit dehydrated, even though I'm always preaching, De you know, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. I think I'm a little bit, I could use a little bit more. Okay, can you see what I'm doing now? This is just a couple different shades of blue in here so far, okay? And it's a good base coat. These are two colors of ink, and uh, or two values. And they're very light. Again, here's, you know, a pretty full saturation of that ink, and here is a very light version of it. And it goes back to a couple um, uh, video lessons before where I talked about having a really good solid base coat. See, I've used a lot of those two. I mean, it was two colors of ink, but if I keep adding it, it keeps transferring a little bit more and more, especially on glossy paper. So what you do is you try to achieve the full saturation of it. It's not just coverage where you go side to side and there's a little bit of ink on there. Especially, with, you don't have to do this with all the inks, okay? It's just with those first two, I would say, that are the most important. Okay, now we're back to our Marvy Salvia blue. It's still a light blue, but it's darker than those other two, okay? If you can do work as incrementally as you can, as far as the application of tone, okay? Um, if you don't have this color and you have more of a medium blue, then go ahead and use the medium blue, you know, try it out. Naturally, the more inks you have, potentially, you know, the more variation you can have, but there's diminishing returns. I don't think it, you know, I, I don't think if I had 20 blues, it would make, you know, much of a difference um, between some that had, let's say, five or six, you know. because these colors are transparent. You know, 20, 20 versions of blue, I don't think is really going to do very much. Okay, I'm kind of adding some of this down on this snowbank. Okay, see the more I kind of tap on here too, so you have different kind of strokes that you use, okay? If you want to go darker, kind of build it up a little bit more, okay? Because sometimes the, the streaking motion, what you're doing is you're kind of removing ink a little bit, you know? You're like sweeping it off. I don't mind that though, because it kind of lends itself to the spirit of the scene, or you know, the gesture by which you lay some inks down, okay? Kind of using this at a bit of an angle like this, okay? See that? If you ever get tired, one of the things I mentioned is I just grab a paper towel and it worked just fine. I kind of rest my arm on top of it and, you know, and it rolls like that. I'm guessing this is probably not going to be quite as comfortable, but there's an Aquafina bottle, you know stay hydrated, right? And I, I don't know, it's just something to rest your arm on, right? I guess if you want a more of a workout, then have it suspended, I don't know. It is somewhat comfortable to kind of rest your arm on something, you know? This is a very ergonomic motion that I'm doing right here, see this? And I'm just kind of flicking it. All right, let's, let's, Get this a little bit darker in some of these white areas, okay? I'm 
I don't always achieve what I'm going after, okay? Sometimes the scene, you know, from the initial concept to the final result, sometimes other things take place. And I think, well, I don't want to make it so much night anymore because I really like the way it looks right now. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that on this scene, but sometimes those types of things come out and I just, I don't know, it just changes and alters as far as the concept goes and the execution. Alright, this is probably irritating as far as the sound for you guys, so I'm going to remove that. Alright, see those little wisps in the sky starting to come about? Okay, that was the salvia blue. And there's a lot of ink in it. I don't know, I might have re-inked it recently. I love it. Okay, it really just blends and for this type of look, it, it's working great. All right. Kind of giving a little bit of dimension to uh, some of this uh, snowy bank right here She's doing a little bit of shading in the back of this ridge right here okay making it look a little bit more dimensional so this is what i'm doing right here kind of i have this at an angle and i'm just kind of tapping down some color like so okay and i can do it right here as well See, things look a little bit more rounded that way if you kind of shade a certain side. It's like my finger right here, you know. It's a little bit more illuminated, then it gets darker as it moves out here a little bit. Okay, got a little bit more in the sky. It feels a little more windy now, don't, don't you think? You know, having those streaks like that. It's like a wind tunnel down that area. Or that part of the scene. All right, let's go to a medium blue. If you have a Mento Bahama blue, you can use that one. Let me try it. There's so much ink down here right now. Mento inks, as well as most other brands of inks, they're kind of thick, so I'm not sure if they'll apply or not. No, it looks pretty good. It's a very bright blue. I'm not worried about getting kind of like this real streaky because I, I want it I want the gesture to be there if possible. Sometimes it's hard to kind of achieve kind of movement and, and uh, kind of gesture in stamped work, you know. And this is one way you can kind of do that though, because it is. I mean, these sponge the sponge applicators I mean it's you are kind of in a way it's I guess it's like a it's like a paintbrush I guess you know so you can add kind of a, a certain emotional spirit to to a scene so if you've used a, uh, a stylus tool before and if you ever think or if you use it in your pieces you, you can say that in 
sense your your painting, you know. Do I see myself as a painter? Not really. But I guess technically, you know, this kind of is in a way, in terms of the application of tones, you know, in specific areas. All right, this memento is going on really nice. I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that it, because it is a very thick ink, I wasn't quite sure if kind of applying it to this somewhat damp surface with all these inks already applied, if it would kind of, uh, you know, I thought it might be rubbing off ink as opposed to applying it. Well, we'll see how much it can take. I don't know, it keeps getting a little bit darker, so it's working beautifully. See what I mean about those clouds kind of uh, disappearing from all of the coverage, but it is giving it a bit more texture, you know, up there. Visual interest, you know, in terms of having kind of a, I don't know, I guess it is somewhat of a contrasting kind of a shape. You know, we have these little wisps like this, and then there's this little billowy still imagery in the background kind of lending itself to kind of a little bit of a scenic depth within that given space. Okay, it's getting cooler and cooler maybe. Maybe this is cooling me down because I it's not really physically doing it, but I didn't even think about the heat there for about 20 minutes, or I don't know, however long that was, 15 minutes. Okay. That was number 10 blue, very similar to the memento. I was just curious to see if it kind of uh, showed up at all in, in here. And I guess it did. All right. How about Danube blue? Kind of a... Well, not a dark navy, but... Okay, it's a little bit darker than, you know, the previous one. The Bahama and the number 10 light blue from Marvy. Kind of has like light coming through like that now, doesn't it? Actually, so that's looking pretty good. I don't know. We kind of just moved away from that nighttime, didn't we? But if it serves the scene better, changing the theme. I don't know, or I don't know, not really the theme, but that one aspect of the uh, scene, then so be it. All right, this is the number three blue from Marvy. It's kind of a navy blue. Yeah, it's a little bit darker. Well, I don't know if it's darker than the Danube blue, but it, it's penetrating, so I see it more, you know, than the uh, the Danube blue. I don't know. What do you think? 
do we have a lot of movement in the uh, sky now? I think so. So see, I'm kind of keeping that same type of motion right here. I'm keeping it real loose, okay, in terms of my application. I feel no pressure in here. Now, um, as far as having that rest there, I could see someone's arm, you know, getting tired doing that or something of that sort. That's why, you know, you might want to throw something underneath you and do it that way. It's very comfortable, but as far as like your hands go, always kind of be aware of how you're using them, okay? At the angle and around your shoulder, you know, if you're kind of not keeping it in a nice ergonomic kind of position, you know, your body will tell you and it's important to kind of make a conscious effort to keep things in a nice, comfortable position. And when you do that, you don't have to do that forever, you know, in terms of consciously thinking of, you'll just kind of start automatically doing it after a while it's because it's creating kind of a muscle memory. All right, kind of deepening those shadows around that. snowy bank, you know, hopefully it looks a little bit more, the forms are looking a little bit more rounded to you. I think it does to me. Okay. Now, I, as I was working down here, this top portion is setting up a little bit more, so what I can do is I can come in and I can get it darker using that existing ink, and that's going back to that video couple times ago where it's like, I think it was the trade secrets one, you know, where I talked about the amount of ink, not just going through a certain number of colors, okay? It's about how much you use of each color, okay? And that's, I don't know, it's equal to, if not more important than the number of colors you use. Would this look better with 20 blues on it, you know, maybe, but um, but not if you didn't use them in their entirety, their, to their fullest extent, okay? All right, that's pretty dark right there, but really the darkest um, blue is that Prussian blue, number 29. See that, how dark that can really get there. I think Prussian blue, it, whatever makes up that color, you know, and dyes, dye form, um, the ink seems thinner to me, so it really penetrates the, uh, you know, this cardstock and all those other colors that have come before it. So it looks really dark. I, I, you know, I can almost feel it when I'm applying, you know, color with it. it. It's subtle, but there might be kind of a, a thin type of uh, feel to it, and it glides very nicely. Um, and it will stain your fingers much faster than other colors of ink, which is fine, they're non-toxic, but it might take a bit if you get it on your fingers, and I probably do. Um, come out, I usually hit my fingers with a little bit of a, you know, that gray, uh, the green scouring side of those types of sponges. All right, we're looking colder and colder, I think, I feel, <laughs> from a visual standpoint. It's not how much you use. I mean, it's not what colors you use or how many different colors you use. It's about how much you use of each one. Sometimes with the darker colors, I don't use that much. 
uh, because sometimes it's more on the perimeter of the scene, but um, this is one that I want, uh, or I wanted somewhat dark, okay? It might not end up being that way as dark as expected, but but nonetheless, it's a pretty decent coverage um, in terms of quantity of that ink. Can I see this down here? This is kind of reflecting the light that's happening above. Especially if it's snow. Snow is very reflective of light. I think I've mentioned this in another video, but... Oh, there's something like... I don't remember what it was, but... There is something like... Um, like Earth, you know, like on a mountain or something like that. It, re it reflects... I don't know what it was, 20 or 15 or 20 percent of the light back to your eye, but if there's snow, it was something like, I don't know, 85 percent of the light or something like that. So, that being said, if you have any light up in the sky and you're doing a snowy terrain, I would have some of it reflecting some of that light, just because it does pick up that, like that a lot. And if you want it, I mean, if you want it to represent snow, as far as you know, the light reflecting characteristics of it. Remember, just don't tone everything out. You know, retain a little bit of that lighter value of the page. Okay, that was Prussian blue. Coming around, it's a fairly dark scene. Just tossed out one of my black pads, my old black pads. I will get some of those blank pads for myself um, from Marvy and play around with it, test it out, see how much ink it requires from a reinker uh, bottle to, you know get it started. Someone mentioned that to me once or recently. And um, I said, well, I haven't inked up any of those pads, so I'm not really quite sure how much they hold, but they do hold quite a bit. But I was telling her, um, I don't know that I would ink it up fully. You know, I, I like my pads. I mean, I do like a brand new pad. There's something to it. But, you know, as far as usage goes, I, I feel like um, I like it best when it's maybe just a little bit over or around two-thirds, you know, damp, you know, in terms of the, uh, the maximum capacity, maybe two-thirds to a half or something, half to two-thirds. Sometimes I don't like them super, super wet, you know, because there's just, you know, all, all of my images are, there's a lot of detail in them, and if I'm stamping something out, like with the black, you know, I don't want there to be any kind of puddle up of ink in the uh, in the tighter details of some of the designs you know some of the designs that have a lot of uh, detailed areas you know there's a lot of condensed little dots in there and if you're using a really super juicy pad it you know could have a tendency of uh, puddling up a little bit So, I don't know. If I'm inking up and it, you know, I can do it, I probably wouldn't go with a full, full saturation. But, I don't know, it probably also depends on your area. If it's super dry out, maybe having juicy, real juicy pad helps. Okay, so. I don't know if that's more northern lights or what, but um, we have all those wisps like that. I don't know. It looks cold to me. 
certainly not 90 degrees like it is here, but um, looking okay. Now, all right, I'm going to clear some space here because I'm expecting to do a lot of that splatter paint type of uh, application into the scene right here because I want there to be kind of this snow flurry. I think I've named a couple scenes like that. Um, okay, actually, that being said, I, I'm going to have to stamp out this first. Because if I don't, this bleed-proof white dries and it's like a little raised little piece of pebble on there or something like that, or like sandpaper. And of course we want, you know, a nice flat surface when we're uh, stamping. So I'm going to do this right now. It'll be the spooky branch. I just chose it because of it. It's gesture and uh, it's nice and spindly, you know, so we can stamp it into the scene. And um, the, you know the background will show just fine because it is an airy stamp. Okay, so let's say that the wind is kind of. It almost looks like the wind is blowing that way now, though. <laughs> I'll apply the splatter paint like that way, though. Okay. All right, I'm going to lean this kind of in the gesture. I don't know, though. Maybe it does look like it's going the other way now. We'll see if we can redirect the wind from a visual standpoint. Okay, nice foreground image, like so. I just had deja vu. This kind of looked like, actually, this looks like the... Uh, scene that I did a little while back, but I did it in like red tones, and then I put this uh, spooky branch image in there. Okay. Normally I don't go in the same direction. It would be like this way and then this way. All right. But I want everything to kind of have that, you know, that feel. All right. I'm going to change the angle slightly just so it doesn't look exactly like the same image just used many times, uh, you know, I will be able to tell that, but um, maybe I don't want it quite so apparent upon first glance. Okay, maybe one more. This might not look bad in kind of a white impression of it out there as well. Okay, just used a little bit portion of it right here. Everything's kind of leaning that way, right? Now, normally I try to balance things off, but I don't want to here. Okay, I was thinking this might look kind of interesting in here too. Yeah, let's do it. Sometimes things like subject matter changes too. I'll think, oh, okay, I want to use that in that scene. Then I get down to the end of it and I, I just don't feel like it. All right, now where do I want this? I could put it in the back area. I could have it in the spotlight down here. Hmm, this one's a tough one. Something usually stands out to me more than the other. I think I'm gonna go with my instincts though and put it on that little back ridge, kind of in the shadow a little bit. Okay, I'm going to wipe off some of its feet and that shadow of it quite a bit. Okay, I don't want it to stand out too much. I want it to look like it's standing in snow, so wiping off a portion of its legs, huffs or hoofs or whatever. 
would give it the appearance that it's standing in something. In this case, it would be snow. Okay. So far, so good, I guess. Um, hmm. Let me see something here. Well, oh, where did it go? I had that little bit of a, uh, let's do it. I had a little, little bit of that uh, little kind of winter's spindly kind of a uh, twig look. And I'm going to add some of that in scene in black ink, okay? I'll add it down here just to give a little bit of variation throughout here, okay? So that here. some of them a little bit that way as well to kind of keep in that um, spirit of uh, you know the cold cold wind okay so see it gonna stand in here all along there I put one back in there it's leaning that way so what we have is this I just had this notion um, this nagging little thing in my head that said mm, are you sure you want to add in that uh, uh, splatter paint technique and the reason why I think I thought that is because I kind of like that scene, like now. Um, but in the spirit of exploration and fearless stamping, <laughs> um, let's go in and uh, let's go in and see if we can add a little bit more of a gesture to the scene with some uh, some of that splatter technique okay all right I'm gonna have to add it that one sure looks like it's going up this way though boy yeah okay let's see if I still have some moisture in here and no I need to add some more Dr. Martin's blade proof white Um, this is really some fun stuff. I would recommend a bottle. It's not expensive. Of course, you have to, probably have to order it because it's, you can't just like go down to anywhere and buy it. But, um, I don't know. It's, what was that? $4 and 15 cents. I might've bought it a long time ago, but I don't know. It's probably, it probably hasn't gone up that much more in price. And I, I think this is my original bottle from, yikes, I don't know, almost 30 years ago. Oh my gosh, I, how did I get that, how did that splatter already? Well, that's where it's going anyway, so. Okay, so I reconstituted a little bit. Well, not a little, there's quite a bit of liquid in there, see that? kind of want it, yeah, I don't know if you want, you don't want it like syrup thick, but you don't, probably don't want it too thin either, okay? All right, let me see if this is working. Just an old toothbrush. Okay, all right, and I'm 
going to come in this way, okay? Let's zoom in here a little bit. Don't worry about that. Kind of adds to it. I don't know if I want like a dime size, you know, a little splatter, but. There's a little bit of, well, maybe that's wrong. There's a lot of random types of things that take place in, in such a application, but. Um, and it's all kind of part of the fun. Sorry I had to do this kind of upside down, but I'm coming at it from this side. I wanted it to kind of splatter out like that, so here's what we look like. I, you know, I don't know. I don't think that looks bad. I think it looks pretty good as far as a, another texture, don't you think? And I don't know, just that is fun to me. Um, whew. no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Not that there hasn't been some kind of precarious moments in these videos or just in demonstrations over the years in general. If you're at a convention or something like that, and you're kind of working on something sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you, you know, you kind of test the limits of things and and you just feel this kind of tension in the air where everyone's kind of thinking, I don't think that looks very good. And they're right, it doesn't, you know, a lot of the times. And until you kind of keep working it, you know, that's why I always tell people, you just kind of have to keep working it. And usually, you know, things kind of come out in the end, but sometimes you're kind of pushing the, uh, I don't know, the, the envelope in terms of colors or combinations of colors and whatnot. And that's where a lot of the growth is when you kind of push the envelope somewhat. Okay, so um, there's nothing cooler and cooler. I'm going to go in here now. I'm going to um, add in some additional touches in here in terms of snow and we'll put some snow on these branches and uh, we'll look at some of that night sky although there's clouds up there maybe we'll add some stars and whatnot kind of when you get rid of some cloud cover sometimes or you have some areas of open space it means that those clouds aren't con kind of containing some of the uh, the warmth you know, and uh, that can be even cooler looking. Now I know there's snow coming from somewhere, but uh, maybe that's right above us or something. That sort of, but so that nice kind of color glow working in there, and that's due to the amount of blues I used and undertones in here, okay? Not just the quantity of colors, but the amount of each color that you use, okay? So, anyways, uh, we'll get to that. I'm going to go Get a quick drink, though, and let that um, set up. This uh, bleed-proof right really uh, dries very quickly, so, you know, it sets up and it's ready to go. That's one of the beauties of it, too. It's kind of a chalky um, paint, and it really dries quickly, so. I don't know what's in it. It's like quick-dry concrete or something like that. Not really, because, you know, it's in here, but it really does dry uh, fast. Okay, I'm back, and it has been about three hours. I just had a, uh, not a quick, but a dinner break. And um, let's see, I'm looking for my, I guess I should start this video after I find everything. I'm looking for my little paintbrush here. 
I have to say, I really like the composition and uh, what I'm seeing so far. I like these little wisps in here going together with that texture. I liked it without, but uh, I probably like it even more with. And I like that some of these kind of splatters got a little bit elongated, you know, like that one right there, you know, with that kind of directional uh, splatter paint. Uh, I would say I'm getting more used to it than I'm doing it a little bit more now, but um, I don't know how you can really control that very well. But um, hold on, I need to find my little tiny number two brush. Okay, I found my little trusted little um, number two paintbrush. Can't even read the... Uh, the name on it. I probably got this back when I was a student, and uh, I don't know, never used it much uh, since. So, anyways, let's go back to the um, the opaque white. I mean, uh, not the opaque white, but the, the bleed proof white, which is opaque. And let's see what we can do with it. Let's see if I can get some reasonably fine strokes with it. Probably getting a little bit more used to playing around with uh, a paintbrush. All right, let's build up a little bit of snow on some of these branches, okay? suddenly got a little bit quiet because uh, <laughs> I'm not used to doing this. Getting more, I guess, you know, from using it in a few times in the past. Uh, oh, I don't know. But let's see here. I'm kind of covering this. I'm using this as a little bit. Uh, I'm using my paper towel here to, so I won't get my uh, hand on this uh, paper cardstock. Starting it right where in those intersections of those uh, branches, and uh, I kind of do a little bit of a stroke like um, like that. <laughs> and one of them looks weird, but if you kind of add more and more, it kind of makes sense as a kind of a design element, I guess. And then if you don't like any of it, you just kind of rub it off because it. You know, it's not like uh, sticking on these branches like like iron or something. You can kind of you can kind of manipulate it even after it dries. It's it's real shocking. It won't damage what um, you have on the surface. So. Okay, it's kind of uh, kind of in the spirit of a. Uh, I don't know, the, the card, I think. It's kind of helping to, you know this, I didn't realize it until now, but um, as far as like a continuous, or not a continuous, but a, um, a repeated pattern um, or mark within a scene, okay? Um, this kind of stroke that I'm doing, See this type of thing right here? It kind of reiterates what's going on up here in the sky. That's the real prominent thing. So if I'm doing these little marks like this on the branches, it's kind of a subtle 
kind of a um, I don't know, reiterate, reiteration, I guess, of what's going on up in the sky. Everything's kind of got this motion, like it's going that way, um, which I think looks pretty good. Um, hmm. Right, I thought about adding some snow in some areas down here when I was doing the coloring. I was thinking I can kind of add a little bit of a kind of a snowy effect on top of some rocks, perhaps. And we'll see how that looks. Okay. Um, kind of like I do in um, the gel pen at times. All right. Let me try to zoom in here. And I will try to keep an eye on the screen so that I'm not doing a bunch of effects off screen. All right, now this is the way the scene goes, and see I'm painting like this, but I can't get to it as easy as this, so what I do is I turn my card in a direction that's the most conducive to making that mark. I don't have to have everything right side up all the time if I know what kind of mark I'm going after. And if my hand can get here easier than doing this, see, I can't see what I'm doing as much as if I do this. I'm sitting like right here, so I'm looking down like that. So turn your cards in the direction that's most conducive for the most, uh, I guess, graceful mark. See, my hand still moves like this, right? Okay. That's why when I'm doing these types of branches, I turn it around so I can go like that, okay? And it feels the most natural um, to me. And I think when you kind of make your marks um, as effortless as possible, okay, I think that that type of spirit uh, reflects in the overall kind of a feeling of a scene. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm building up a little bit of tone in here, a little bit of texture. It's not very... It's probably not very um, visible on camera because I'm not creating very much of a contrast between these marks and the background. I'm just putting it over some very pale blue just to put a little bit more texture in those areas. Okay. See if I can do something here. Find a few little wisps up here in the clouds. Or I don't know if it's clouds or whatever it is. Kind of an extra little touch, I guess. Hmm. 
It's a lot of fun. And just the scene I was kind of hoping for in terms of uh, overall kind of temperature and kind of the feel of it. And I think I have learned something in the process. And it's just a little bit of a... I've done these types of things before and certainly worked in this kind of compositional structure, I guess. But um, what I learned this time was um, kind of this tweak here. A lot of times I have things from a compositional standpoint. Um, I usually have things a little bit more balanced, like everything is kind of going this way, okay? Well, I guess these trees and everything are going like that. A lot of those marks are going like that, but I guess these things are going this way, but inadvertently, unbeknownst to me, I feel these wisps are going kind of that direction. Okay, I guess it's because these pillars of kind of light are kind of extending out that way more. Well, I guess that's, that's what it would be. If I kind of had them going down this way more, like if this area was light in here and then I had it darker, it would probably feel like it was doing that, maybe so. Um, but, and then see even this little, this uh, elk here is kind of pointing that way, so everything's kind of going that way, but maybe up here it's doing this, so. I don't know. That's uh, compositionally in terms of visual movement. That's a little bit of a different thing for me. But I feel that this is a continuation. Almost, it almost feels like it's going in that direction. This whole thing's kind of arcing like that. So the structuring is a little bit uh, different um, in terms of what I'm usually doing. I guess, although I guess I shouldn't. But um, I don't know. It's uh, a little bit different. Okay, let's see what this looks like without all these, this glariness to it. All right. Anyways, I think that's about done. Um, if I could think of anything more, I'll do it. But overall, that's my... Wait, bend this here. I don't know, can you see these? Let me see if I can get this camera to focus in tight. Put those little streaks in here paint, kind of going this way. You can kind of see it right here. Okay, see all those little marks in there? But that's what it looks like right there, so. Um, movement. Uh, it's lighter than I thought it was going to be. It's not so much, I guess it's, I don't know, I guess it's night, but it's kind of different though, isn't it? And maybe it isn't quite as freezing cold, I don't know. It, yeah, it's still cold as uh, I, maybe I thought helped it would be, but um, anyway, and lighter than I thought it would be. Okay, I thought it would be much darker, so. But good enough for me in terms of cooling me down for a little bit and in doing so. I guess it was just a matter of when I get working on something and it starts kind of coming into, I don't know, resolution or, I don't know, coming together as a piece. I, that's all I think about, so, you know, for me it was kind of looking at getting lost on all this kind of texture and movement in here, and kind of putting little highlights on here is really fun, so. Anyway, thank you for watching, hope you enjoy the piece, and, uh, I don't know, I'll get this sprayed up and matted, I think, and hopefully that'll add to it a little bit. I could use some silver in here too, but I don't think I really need to. I think it's done as a piece. Anyways, thanks again for watching and uh, for tuning in to the channel.